Hello and welcome to the history of Transformers. Today's episode, Rumble. And here we go. Rumble was one of the original Decepticon raiding party that crashed into Earth four million years ago, aboard the Ark. Reawakened in 1984, he was reformatted into an audio cassette that fit snugly into Soundwave's chest compartment. Despite his small size, he seemed to be on equal footing with most other Decepticons. Rumble is fully capable of fighting opponents much larger than himself. An example can be seen in the episode More Than Meets the Eye Part 2, where he fought Hound underwater and won. Rumble can give smaller Autobots like Bumblebee a very hard time on the battlefield. No doubt this was due to his seismic power, which he used quite often. Even without the use of his seismic attacks, Rumble would often go head-to-head -head with full-size Autobots. A common Decepticon tactic was to get Rumble to use his earth-shaking abilities to agitate the hydroelectric power sources, as the Decepticons did at Sherman Dam and the Great Falls. Although tremendously oversized, Rumble took on the Dinobot Sludge all by himself. Sludge was able to use his own earth-shaking abilities to knock one of Rumble's pile drivers off. Assisted by his diminutive stature, Rumble was also responsible for stealing some of the cars that would later become the Stunticons, and for inspiring Megatron to name the group. Rumble was effectively doubled by his body type brother, Frenzy. Both had identical voices, personalities, abilities, although Rumble appeared alone more often than not. During the Battle of Autobot City, Rumble, Frenzy, Ravage, and Ratbat attacked the communication tower that Blaster was using to broadcast a message to Optimus Prime at Moonbase 1. He and his fellow cassettes piled on Perceptor before Blaster unleashed his own cassettes on them. When Megatron fell battling Prime, Rumble helped during the Decepticon retreat by carrying Megatron's fusion cannon, while Soundwave carried Megatron. On the return ride, it became necessary to jettison weight to make it to Cybertron, and Megatron was one of the ejected. After that, Decepticons discuss who would be the next leader of the Decepticons. The Constructicons argued that they should rule as they form Devastator, the most powerful robot. Things got ugly when Soundwave called the Constructicons inferior, and Hook called Soundwave an uncharismatic bore. Rumble and Frenzy caused him to separate by shaking Astro Train with their pile drivers. In the end, Starscream won out, and Rumble was present for his coronation, and subsequent dissolving by Galvatron. Uncertain what the powerful newcomer was called, Rumble asked what his name was, and Galvatron responded. After the movie, Rumble was on char with his fellow wrecked out cons, rallying them on about pulverizing the Autobots. When they attacked Rodimus and Grimlock, Rumble was the same size as the other Decepticons, due to a weird animation error, and he was never seen again. Background Information on the Generation 1 TV series, Rumble was represented with the colors of Frenzy's toy. That is, dark and medium blue rather than red and black, and vice versa. This led to some confusion and later controversy amongst fans. In later years, toys sprouting the name Rumble require additional Decepticon prefixes for trademark reasons, hence the making of the official name Decepticon Rumble. 